South Africa shared its discovery of Omicron with the World Health Organization on November 24th last year. It's been 100 days since then and in our panel discussion on this Thursday, we touch upon related events here in Korea and over in England. For more, I have Dr. Kim Sing-Tek from Institute Pasteur Korea. Welcome back, Dr. Kim. Good afternoon. I also have David Cox live on the line. David, it's a pleasure to see you again. Thanks for having us here again. Right, Dr. Kim, we'll start here. The daily tally here in Korea appears to be rising faster than earlier forecasts. How do you explain its accelerated pace? Well, as we talked, just uh, we are still just in the face of just the increasing number of just the total infections, and then the uh, the, the speed of the escalation is a little bit faster than we uh, uh, anticipated earlier, and I think a number of just the variables actually affected uh, the speed. Well, the first one is actually last week uh, our government actually extended some business hours from the nine to just the ten, and then some uh, actually just experts were a little bit just concerned about the uh, the kind of just, uh, the the extension of the business hours. And I don't know exactly how much actually that actually affect the uh, this uh, total increase. And then secondly, now we are in just in the middle of just a uh, sort of national just a uh, uh, presidential election campaign. So the, in the end, I mean, just the people are just uh, tend to just get together just before some this kind of a bit of the political just a big event. And then probably this is uh, some, uh, what, the two just uh, major uh, variable that actually affect the, uh, our just the current status of this escalating number of just the total infections. Right. Uh, David, what, meanwhile, can you tell us about the COVID-19 situation over in England following its Omicron peak in early January? Yes, so at the moment we have about 45,000 cases in the UK. It's definitely much less than early January, which is great. We've seen a little bit of a rise. There's a new sub-variant of Omicron called um, BA2, and that's been causing a little bit of a rise in cases. Um, but um, a pretty much like we've seen like a, a very slight increase in hospitalizations, but it's, it's nothing compared to, say, last year at the height of the second wave in the UK. So at the moment, the healthcare system is coping pretty much OK with COVID. So the vaccines have made obviously a massive difference and we have the antiviral pills. So all of that has been has been helping. Right, that is good to know. And Dr. Kim, what can be concluded more or less about Omicron itself, given the information uh, disclosed thus far? Well, the, as you just said earlier, the Omicron just variant was actually reported from the South Africa to WHO last uh, November last year, and uh, since then, the, well, there was a, this actually virus has just a predominant just the, the virus just globally, and then there are some uh, now just we have uh, very well just aware of this virus just uh, the, compared to just. Uh, just earlier, just time point, and then well, when, uh, whenever actually just uh, this kind of variant appears, the people and the experts are concerned about the, how transmissible this virus is, and also how severe the disease this virus can cause. And now we know just a lot of that. Just uh, the first of all, in terms of uh, transmissibility, this virus seems to be just uh, very, very contagious compared to the uh, some other just uh, prior just uh, the variants. And then in terms of severity. In all the time points, there was some uh, debate whether it, this virus is really just uh, causing severe disease or not. And then one of the actually compounding factors to just uh, inhibiting just uh, such kind of interpretation is that uh, many people these times were actually somehow just immune to the, uh, the, uh, this sars cov 2 because of whether it is by the, uh, the vaccination or just by just natural infection. So maybe just our immune, just a immune status somehow just uh, make just uh, it, uh, make it difficult to just interpret whether this uh, Omicron variant is really just causing severe disease or not. But uh, now in the end, uh, just, uh, every, uh, every expert now just uh, agree that uh, now this virus seems to just cause less severe disease. And then the virus seems to replicate mostly in the uh, upper respiratory tract rather than in the lower respiratory and then infection and the replication in the lower respir respiratory tract somehow just correlates with the uh, very severe disease. Especially this is a case for just a previous, just the, the previous uh, variant of concern. And then the, uh, for this virus, we are also just concerned about some uh, diagnosis and the vaccines and the drugs. Especially of the diagnosis, the, uh, one of the key features of this Omicron variant was that uh, actually our just actually standard, just a golden standard of diagnosis is just a PCR. And then for the PCR, generally we amplified 
three different regions of the, 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 this coronavirus uh, the genome. And then one uh, the area is the, uh, the called the, the, the spike gene. And then in the case of this uh, diagnosis, the, the amplification of this uh, spike gene was actually just, uh, actually just missing. And uh, this is what's actually just a key feature of the when we actually discovered the, uh, this, uh, the Omicron variant. Now the, uh, the domestic companies and others, now we have a very good system. The, not just only just detecting the virus, now we can actually discern the, which kind of variant is actually just impacting just a specific person. So that's kind of some progress. And in terms of the, the vaccine, well, unfortunately, the, the, the vaccine actually, well, the, there are two main aspects of the, the response by the vaccination. One is the antibody production, and the other is the cell-mediated immunity. Unfortunately, the antibody, which is uh, actually uh, induced by the vaccination, actually do not have any, actually just good neutralization just capacity compared to the other just the previous variant. But just by just, uh, we actually by just, uh, uh, just administering the, uh, the booster shot, we can actually just, uh, just uh, induce just broad, broad just responses in terms of antibody responses. And, uh, but uh, thankfully, though we have the very still just a good and the robust and the long lasting just the, the cell mediated immunity, which is very good. And the, the, the main role of this immunity is actually just uh, uh, the blocking the uh, progression to the, uh, the severe disease. And the lastly, the, uh, just the drugs, and then most of the drugs, including the Paxlovid and then Remdesivir and then Molipiravir, still very effective against the, uh, this Omicron variant. But the, uh, one of the uh, concerns is that the monoclonal antibodies, the, uh, some, well, well, the uh, regional monoclonal antibody and then the uh, Eli Lilly and even the Korean the sertoria antibody did not show any just good neutralizing capacity against this Omicron variant. One, uh, Potentially, just one exception is the, uh, the antibody uh, developed by the uh, GSK and the BFI technology. That shows still just retains the uh, neutralizing capacity of it against uh, this Omicron. Right, I see. Mm. Simply speaking, Dr. Kim, could, mm. we, uh, could we conclude that Omicron does appear to be milder than previous variants? That's for sure. Right, I see. Meanwhile, David, I believe all pandemic-related restrictions have been lifted over in England as of last Thursday. What has been the public response to that? Yes, so we have entered a new phase in the pandemic in the UK, the government's big living with COVID strategy. I mean, I think most people are relieved. Um, pandemic fatigue has definitely been a big thing here over in the UK. I mean, the most people who are maybe still at risk are people with weakened health systems, people with, you know, suffering from like severe autoimmune conditions or people like so who've kind of been for chemotherapy, things like that. Um, but I think the main concern at the moment is because there's been the end of free testing, which is, is coming up in and scientists and doctors are worried that we're going to lose track of the virus, particularly the emergence of new variants, because we're going to, for now, we're going to be relying on, the, on basically kind of COVID surveys, which probably are going to be, so if any new variant does emerge, we'll find out about it about two weeks later than we say we'll do at the moment. So I think that's the only real concern right now. Right. So as you mentioned, free COVID-19 tests, David, will end on the 1st of April. Is there an exception, though? What about healthcare workers or those at risk? Can they still receive free testings? Um, yes, so I think basically within hospitals and also within care homes and things like that, there still are going to be dedicated testing programs. And I think some private companies as well might introduce their own lots of testing programs for their employees because they, I think the one problem with the end of free testing is people are a little bit unsure about what to do because the symptoms of Omicron, particularly once you've been vaccinated, are very similar to if you say have an ordinary cold. So it's quite hard to know if, say, you're going to be putting vulnerable people maybe in your family or in the workplace at risk so people aren't quite sure what to do about that but I think companies particularly big companies are going to respond by introducing their own testing regimes and and definitely within hospitals right the legal requirement David for isolating or mandatory isolation that is in the case of a COVID-19 patient is also going to be lifted what is the response to that are there any concerns there are, I mean, there are like some concerns, particularly I think from people whose families are, you know, vulnerable and obviously the elderly as well. But the government has responded by that by basically introducing a fourth vaccine, which is going to be rolled out to over 75s in April. So I think that's kind of the government's way of essentially trying to ensure that the vulnerable people in the country are still protected, even though we are relaxing these restrictions by introducing more vaccines.
Right. And staying with restrictions, Dr. Kim, here in Korea, social restrictions include a 10 p.m. curfew for di drinking and dining establishments and a cap of six people for social gatherings. How effective are these restrictions at this particular point in our fight against the pandemic, especially in the absence of other containment efforts like contact tracing or close contact isolation? Well, first of all, I have to add that one, one thing that uh, actually just the Omicron variant is uh, relatively just uh, milder than the other just the pre previous just uh, variant, but it's not Omicold. It is still just uh, could be dangerous for the unvaccinated people and then the people with the, uh, some high risk group. So vaccination is very important. And that the, regarding the, your question, I think uh, the, there seems to be some uh, confusion because uh, the, some uh, local just, uh, the district courts actually just, they actually judge the very different just the, uh, the rules against the, uh, some uh, authorities. So then that actually just causes some confusion among the, uh, some the people. And then the, I think uh, there was some uh, uh, I think uh, uh, kind of just confusion, but uh, one of the just the background is that now just people believe that uh, now many people are somehow just immune to the uh, the virus, whether it is just by the vaccination and also just uh, just natural infection. But then the uh, uh, there were not just uh, this time, but uh, very early in the not just early, very uh, sometime just uh, last last year, many people actually also argued that uh, maybe now we. Once we just obtain the very just uh, well just a, a, maybe just some some uh, maximum just a vaccination rate among the uh, some general people, then now what about just uh, we just uh, just lift up all the uh, just mandates because now the kind of just responsibility is just uh, shifted from the government to the the personals, the in, so individuals and then the the those individuals who chose not to be vaccinated should get just responsibility. But those are just one of the opinions. And then the, I think when, in terms of just government side, the government should just still just be very careful about just the protecting very just the high risk groups, especially on the, uh, some, uh, the, the, the elderly people and then with the, uh, some, uh, some underlying just medical conditions. As my colleague Po Gyeong mentioned mm. earlier, Dr. Kim, authorities are thinking about lifting social restrictions earlier than their date of expiration, which comes on the 13th of this March. Mm. Uh, what are your thoughts on this? Well, I think that's one of the, the, the possible scenarios. And then the government's actually just the, the anticipating how many just the infections will just occur in the near future. And then how many just the, uh, the severe cases will just occur based on the uh, some experiences in other countries and then the vaccination rate, rate things like that. And then the, one of the things is that the government now just is only just focus on the severe cases and then also some high risk groups. And then what the, the things that we can actually implement it right now is that uh, just giving just a booster shot for those people and also just uh, just uh, giving just uh, the, uh, the, uh, the giving the uh, drugs as soon as possible when they are actually diagnosed as just positive for just COVID-19. So that's one kind one the, the thing that actually government can just uh, take. Right, I see. Mm. And David, what has been the pattern of infection over in England since the lifting of all restrictions last week, would you say? I understand it's too early because you only have a week, but then has there been any tangible retreat or perhaps a rebound in infections, would you say? There's been a slight rebound in infections, definitely. I think it's gone up by about maybe 11% in the last few weeks, but it's hard to tell whether that's anything to do with re removal of restrictions or whether it's just the new Omicron subvariant, which is much more infectious even than Omicron itself, which has just become dominant in the UK. So that is the question at the moment. Right. And Dr. Kim, is Korea's healthcare system capable of coping with COVID-19 caseloads in the absence of social restrictions? Well, uh, the uh, the thing uh, that that's actually what I just uh, talked just a little bit just earlier, and then the uh, just uh, our just uh, the focus. Is, and anyway, we have just shifted it, not just the managing. I mean, just the controlling the number of just the total case numbers, but the government actually already just shifted to the as managing total number of the severe COVID nineteen. So. As long as uh, we are vaccinated, the governments and then also experts agree that uh, as long as we are just vaccinated, now the uh, this Omicron variant is the, actually just the risk level is, is almost the same as the influenza viruses. So this we can actually just deal with. Actually, that's the, what the, uh, the kind of the basis that the government actually decide the, uh, what to pursue in the future. Right. And David, come March 15th, the legal requirement for health and social care workers to be fully vaccinated against COVID-19 will end in England. Do tell us a bit about the background behind this measure and, of course, the public response to it. Yes, so this measure was introduced back in November. It was very, very controversial at the time. Um, people in the UK are very opposed against any kinds of mandates regarding vaccination. And there were a lot of fears that 
the result of it would basically mean that a lot of people would simply leave the care or like the hospital sector. Um, so now, like, so it, now that it's been removed, um, there's it's a lot of people are very happy about that. Um, the question is essentially whether people who left the care sector because of that will come back again. Like, no, one, no one quite knows. But um, I think within like so the uh, the health worker sector, like, so there's a lot of people who are very happy that the the mandate restriction is being removed. Right, and staying with vaccination, David, would you say the public in England has adequate vaccination coverage to protect it, let's say, from future variants? Um, I think at the moment the vaccination picture in the UK is quite good. Uh, I think about 73% are fully vaccinated and about 56% have had a booster shot. So the vaccination coverage is reasonable and particularly at the moment um, it's we've often seen through Omicron that children who haven't been vaccinated have been one of the most vulnerable groups. But in the past few weeks we've just started vaccinating the 5 to 11 year olds. Um, so at the moment I think the vaccination picture is quite good, although obviously it's always hard to tell if like another variant comes along which is more capable of making breakthrough infections but right now we've seen I think that vaccines have really held Omicron at bay because as Dr Kim said for people who are not vaccinated Omicron can be a very severe illness but I think it's a good picture of the vaccination scenario in the country that even with the rise of Omicron we haven't seen that big an uptake in hospitalizations or deaths or anything at all in the last few months. Right and on the subject of variants Dr Kim what more has been shared about the so-called stealth Omicron that both my uh, colleagues and David mentioned earlier? Well, the first I have to say the, uh, the name just as test Omicron was actually derived from the, the fact that uh, this, uh, uh, when we actually try the, uh, the, the standard just the PCR test, this test Omicron is not actually uh, distinguishable from the, uh, the sort of just original just Omicron. And it also it's not easy to distinguish from the uh, some, uh, Delta variant. So then the, the one of the way that we can actually identify whether this virus is from the uh, stealth Omicron or not is just, just the sequencing. And the, it, is, it, it would be actually just costly and then just uh, take time to before just the judging whether it is uh, the stealth Omicron or not. But as I said earlier, whenever just uh, any just, uh, M, just a variant it appears, we are actually concerned about the transmissibility and also the, the severity. But in terms of transmissibility, Although Omicron is uh, much transmissible, much more just transfer contagious compared to the, uh, the previous player, variant, but this uh, BA2, the stealth Omicron, seems to be more uh, transmissible than the, uh, the original this, uh, uh, the Omicron, and which, which in terms of just virology, this virus seems to be more fit and uh, compared to just the Omicron and then just other just uh, the previous uh, the variants. So the, it is quite just possible and then it, we're actually expecting this uh, stealth Omicron would just probably replace the, uh, the, 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 the current just the Omicron with the, uh, this uh, stealth Omicron in the near future. And, uh, but uh, thankfully, in terms of the severity, this virus seems to, be, uh, seems to cause a very uh, similar level of just the se severe, well, the severe disease compared to the Omicron. So uh, this is not a real concern at this moment, although there was uh, some uh, conflicting just uh, data from other countries, but as of now, the, we are somehow just uh, uh, just agree that the severity is very similar to Omicron. And then once the, uh, the person is uh, infected by the Omicron, the person would have just a very uh, good just a uh, uh, level of just uh, protection in terms of just neutralizing antibody and then some uh, cell mediated immunity. Also, even just by the the uh, not not for the, uh, for the uh, uninfected people, that once they uh, got this, uh, the booster shot, they will have very good just the protection against uh, this uh, stealth Omicron as well. And also in terms of uh, diagnosis and then the vaccines and drugs, diagnosis, as I told you, just, uh, it was actually a little bit difficult compared to the uh, stealth Omicron. And then the, uh, unless what, what we do some uh, the real just uh, sequencing uh, the analysis. And for the vaccine, the efficacy of the vaccine is, I think is almost uh, very similar compared to the Omicron variant. And then in terms of the uh, drugs, well, the one of the addition uh, for this uh, stealth Omicron is that the one of the, uh, actually the only just a monoclonal antibody that was still just retained, just a neutralizing activity against the Omicron, that was actually Sotrovimab. But this uh, Sotrovimab actually uh, lost actually much of this neutralizing activity against the, this stealth Omicron, stealth Omicron. So that was actually a major difference compared to the uh, some earlier just Omicron variant and now we are seeing. Right, but regardless of that, the stealth Omicron is as mild and as the current Omicron. That's right. All right, Dr. Kim, as always, thank you very mm -hmm. much for your thoughts today. Mm -hmm. And David, over in the UK, thank you for being with us today. Thank you.